welcome. This is going to be an initial impressions kind of video about Retopo Flow 4. Uh, I've used uh, other Retopo options. Uh, for years I used 3D Code and Quadraw and Maya, but actually uh, for the last few years I've been using the various versions of Retopo Flow for all my Retopology. Uh, and so I just started uh, messing around with Retopo Flow 4. I did uh, have uh, I guess that was a whatever alpha or beta tester for just a tiny bit. Uh, so I'm not going to go through installing it. Uh, you're smart enough to know how to add in an add-on or extension in Blender. So I've already got it enabled. Uh, to get going with it, I've already got my high-res mesh here. You want to select the thing that you want to retopologize. And I'm going to go to Shift-A, Add Mesh. And then you see way down here now I have these two new options. I generally, I think, always do retopology from active, so I'm going to do that. When you do this, note that it's going to create a new mesh. Uh, right now there's actually no information in it yet, but we've got something called dog low now. I already had dog high. Uh, and you may also know that uh, this new version of Retopo Flow doesn't have a dedicated user interface that it launches. It's just part of edit mode now in Blender, which is wonderful. Um, I should note too, um, I understand that one of the tools that was available in previous versions of Retopo Flow patches is not yet implemented, uh, and that's something I tend to use pretty heavily in my retopology. So uh, this video will omit that, uh, and I'm hoping and expecting they'll implement that. It's great. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just expand this a little bit so you can actually see the names and the section for all of the uh, Retopo Flow tools. You can see we've got uh, just now part of our mesh editing tool set. Um, everything from Polypen down to Relax. Those are the uh, sort of native Retopo Flow tools or whatever. Uh, you can see now we also have some of the settings, some stuff you can find over here in the uh, tool settings, or also there's this nice little uh, bit right up here, uh, which allows us to do some things like changing um, settings, but also, Importantly, for something like this, we can enable symmetry. You can see right here, uh, X, Y, Z symmetry. I'm going to go ahead and enable X symmetry. All right, now the other thing is um, I uh, remapped my uh, hotkey for the pipe menu for this. Uh, I've got mine set to Alt-Q, but I think normally it's just W. Uh, but I've got it set up more or less the same way as you would get it. So ultimately, I would expect, for instance, patches to appear in here and also again an extra tool over here. So uh, I didn't like the old version of the uh, of Retopo Flow's um, uh, pie menu. It had this sort of crazy big dedicated pie menu. This is much better. Uh, another thing that's great um, so far that I can tell is that the performance is, is much better with this new version of Retopo Flow. Uh, it was getting pretty laggy for me uh, with anything of any great complexity. So wonderful. So uh, I'm not going to retopo this entire dog, but I'm going to sort of start down the road of like how I might retopo this thing. Um, and so following kind of general principles of uh, retopology for a character like this, uh, you typically want to establish the kind of key face loops uh, around parts, and then uh, you can start filling in the places in between and sort of connecting everything. Now, <clears throat> the way Retopo flow kind of encourages you to work is to establish those key face loops and you typically will establish them um, well, I mean, You could do them with, with most many of these tools But I think what they are suggesting especially for the quickest and easiest way is to start with contours Sorry, I'm gonna start getting used to using this um, pop-up. So contours now contours is um, I should mention that all these tools, once you're ready to use them, are kind of enabled with the control key and then clicking in, in different ways. So contours, the idea with this is if I hold down the control key and say click and drag across, you can notice how I'm going outside the bounds above and below the, um, the dog. You can see how it creates this whole edge loop. Now this is not a very useful edge loop for a couple of different reasons. First off, I just did it at a crazy angle. Second off, um, it's not really at a, at a good um, location to begin with. Uh, it's also got not quite enough um, 
edges yet. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to, say, like my left or, or right view. And let's start with some low-hanging fruit, which is, say, the tail. The tail um, contours is really uh, encourages you to, to do roughly cylindrical parts really quickly. So let's see how this works. I'm going to start, say, over here near the base of the tail. Again, I'm going to pull down the Control key, left-click, and drag to start to establish this. And so now I've got my initial edge loop there. And if you don't have this little thing available, make sure to um, expand this little uh, active tool menu. And you can see this is where I could increase the number of spans. And you can see I could say add this to, now really this is like five because it's mirrored even though it says uh, nine and so on and so forth. Um, and so I can just increase this and get the number that I want. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the side view. And now the idea is I can start to hold down the control key and I can add in extra loops as I see fit, as many as I need. Now, some other nice stuff that's built in here, if I hold, just press the R key, say in the side view, this allows me to uh, go back in to individual loops. And by the way, you could just uh, Alt left click, just like I would normally do. Do that for an existing loop. Um, I can also do a Shift R. Uh, is that still working or not? Uh, looks like Shift R is not working anymore. Uh, so maybe that's something that either I'm missing or um, hasn't been implemented yet, which is the ability to twist the edge loops as opposed to rotate them. So I'll just leave that alone. So I'm going to again hold down the Control key. And the idea is if I go over to, say, this end and just select that edge loop and then Control left click, I can build my contour off of either end. So I'm going to just go back over here. Now another option, instead of say going loop by loop, I could say go way down to the end here. And then I can just utilize the native Blender tools for inserting extra edge, edge loops. And this might be an, an easier option for a long kind of straightforward uh, port part like this, where I can just do sh uh, Shift R and then just use my scroll wheel and just add in extra loops. And you can see probably a little faster for something like that. Uh, I can, you can see I probably want an extra loop right here, so I'll just control R right there. So let me try that one more time. There we go. I don't know why it's not quite working. It seems to be sort of like not snapping in there. But anyway, uh, there's that. So other stuff to work on. Uh, maybe I'll go back over here and just independently just leave that alone, start to establish my neck contour. Same idea, not enough loops to my liking. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the divisions here or spans. Um, something like uh, like that. That seems pretty good for, for now. And now I'm going to do the same thing, just start to work my way up and over. And you'll notice how I'm starting to like kind of angle my loops a little bit, sort of to follow a little bit with the contours or direction of the of the underlying form. All right, try that out. Uh, so other stuff, um, just again, native stuff to Blender. You know, you can hit A to select everything, Alt-A to deselect everything. All right, now next up, uh, let's see how I uh, how it works when I start adding in contours for the legs. Now, when I you can see drag across here, this is wonderful. Uh, uh, my recollection is from previous versions of Retopo Flow that when you tried to do this and extend or create a contour across one leg, and there was another one behind, it would get kind of confused. But looks pretty good right now. So um, again, bump up the loops a little bit. Maybe I'll just leave it at that, and then I'll work my way down. Maybe I'll just create another loop, another loop right there. And then again, utilize the Control R. Just add in some extra loops there. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't like um, this technique. It's not snapping to the surface when I'm using that. Uh, I wonder whether if I now switch over to um, something like uh, Relax. Yeah. So Relax, sorry, jumping around a little bit. That's a nice tool kind of to dive into periodically to kind of do what it sounds like, relax your geometry, smooth it out, tidy it up. Um, so that's again over here or again with the, with the behind menu, uh, relax. Tweak, by the way, this allows me to just sort of like sort of push and pull stuff around a little bit. It's getting kind of uh, weirded out. 
in this case. So I'll just leave that alone. Um, that looks a little bit better right up there. Uh, and this tool, uh, I believe also with, like with Relax, is just based off of uh, your know, usual Blender hotkey. So if you press and let go of F, and you can increase or decrease your range or brush size for this. All right, so let's see here. Um, so that is Contours. Uh, let me actually just switch back to Contours and just sort of like start to flesh out a little bit more, maybe over here in the torso. Again, not nearly enough divisions. I'm just gonna try something like uh, 36 right away. That's too much. Maybe 30. Yeah, give that a whirl. I can always change that later on. And then again, start to uh, establish some of these. Stop right there. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other tools, um, or should I say uh, some of the rest of them. Now, strokes, I should say, I'm not a big user of strokes. I uh, just never really needed them or whatever. Uh, but let's just see how they work. So you'll notice uh, with strokes, um, I can, it, I can uh, draw like, oops, like an extra line right there. And it kind of works um, the same way as the uh, like contours a little bit, except you can just sort of do a partial thing. So for instance, if I go over here and select like, it's like a segment over here and then do a little stroke right there, you can see how it can just kind of quickly create kind of patches basically, parts. So that's the strokes. Um, uh, let's talk about um, poly strips. So I'm gonna switch over to that. Now poly strips is another kind of curve based tool. And it's also meant for kind of laying down um, at least partial face loops. And this is gonna be nice probably for a finer detail uh, this, by the way, is also dependent on your brush size, which is a little confusing because you can't see the width by default. Uh, and this does take a little trial and error in my experience to kind of get the right width. You know, it's not always kind of intuitive until you just try it. But now what I'm going to do is say, um, put in some stuff starting with the face. So if I hold down the control key and drag, this is kind of a nice new quality or feature to this. It's, you get this nice preview of not just the stroke, but also the where the, the thickness of the faces. So you can see kind of quickly it can establish a nice face look like that. And what's great is now I can also um, just get in here with these um, kind of end items and sort of tweak the curvature of the overall uh, poly strip. And this, in my experience with this new version of Retopo Flow, is, is behaving much more nicely than in the past, where very quickly, especially for those of you who've tried out like Retopo Flow 3 and prior versions, your strip would just get go nuts really quickly. So there's all that. Now let's just jump over to uh, Poly Pen, which is sort of like the, the down and dirty, like most basic polygon by polygon option. And so the way this one works is if I hold down the control key just in an area like this, you can just see I can just create by just clicking four times a, uh, a face. Now I'm gonna undo that. Now another nice feature here is I can do this to select, I'm gonna just go to edge selection, to just quickly kind of bridge between two existing edges. So you can see how I can just do that. So I'm gonna go over that again. So um, <clears throat> first, uh, I'm in the poly pen tool. I'm in edge selection. Uh, I think I can also be in, um, in vertex selection too. So if I select basically an edge, so I can use this to build a new polygon off of an existing edge. I'll do the same thing, say over here. Or if I have sort of a space in here that I want to bridge, I'll select one edge, hold down the control key again when I'm with the poly pen tool. Now when I get close to that other edge, you'll notice it just wants to fill it all in. I just left click and it just creates a nice completion in there. So, you know, sometimes I'll just get in there and I'll just do sort of like some piece by piece parts. I can use the native insert edge loop tool and any, anytime I need to, there we go. I can switch over to tweak if I need to and you can see push and pull some of these things here and there. So 
they keep going, but uh, hopefully that gives you, I think I've shown all the main parts. Yeah, that gives you a pretty good sense of, um, of how this tool works and thinks. Um, once you're done, you can just tap it back into object mode. You can see I've got this new mesh underway anytime I want to. If I just go back into edit mode right now, I'm just ready to keep on moving with this, uh, with this tool. So hopefully that's a, a good intro to and uh, impressions video of Retopo Flow 4.